Quite often there's a synergy between a toy line and the cartoon that accompanies it. As shown in a previous video, Thundercats toys are as stupid and obscene as the animated series. G.I. Joe was a kinetic, high-energy cartoon, and the toys had the same rough-and-ready look and feel. The Silverhawks toys, similarly, mirror both the positives and negatives of the TV show they represent. Silverhawks, partly metal, partly real, mighty warriors with the powers to protect space from all evil. Bustle, bust them out! Shredder too! Stargazer, seen us! I clearly remember when I saw this show for the first time that I was dying to get action figures from it. Despite how inane the cartoon is, there's no denying these characters are exquisite. They're some of the most beautiful action figures ever made. We went to toy store after toy store after toy store looking for these things, and I remember feeling like there was a really long span between the time the cartoon debuted and when I finally found the toys. And in that amount of time, my imagination got the better of me. And this was the first time in my life that I remember a toy letting me down when I finally saw it in person. Not saw it in the package in the store, but got home with it, opened the package, pulled it out of its bubble, and what I imagined in my head was actually better than what I got. Kenner, famous for Star Wars and Mask, got the license for Silverhawks, and I often wonder if they snatched it up after seeing the success of LJN's Thundercats line. Despite the lackluster animated series, Kenner clearly had a passionate design team on these toys. The figures of the main five Hawks are absolutely beautiful. Kenner simulated the Hawks' shiny metal forms from the show with figures composed almost entirely of vac metalized plastic in various shades to accurately depict the characters in the cartoon. Visually, the figures are stunning to behold, but once you get past that first glance, the limitations become all too apparent. The Hawks have what amounts to zero articulation. Yes, you can move their legs and arms, sort of, but all four of their limbs are integral to the internal mechanisms that activate their wings. Similar to Kenner's Superpowers line, the Silver Hawks have the leg squeeze feature to activate their flight gimmick. Because the wings are cloth with wrist clips, you cannot really move the arms in other positions without removing the wings which is a pain as the wrist clips can be easily broken and the shiny paint applied to the wings can rub off over time, resulting in dull, dirty wings. The vac metalized paint on them also rubs away with excessive handling, leaving you with once shiny toys now looking like cheap plastic chrome automotive accessories. You really have to wear archivist gloves when touching these guys as a collector. Later Hawk figures would omit the vac metal from the legs and arms to cut down on this wear and tear. If you played with them as intended, kiss their paint goodbye. Even their flagship vehicle, the Mirage, wasn't gentle on these guys. The way the ship was designed, the figures all had to be laid face down in the seats, which would result in scratched torsos. The vehicle itself wasn't exactly the pinnacle of quality either, with weak canopies and finicky spring-loaded features. The villains fare better in this department, but their action features are bizarre, like the awkward mumbo-jumbo headbutt, or Monstar switcheroo face that often jams up. <sighs> but the main reason I didn't buy another Silverhawk after Quicksilver was for one singular aspect, and I think it's pretty obvious. They didn't have their masks. One of the best design elements of the Hawks in the cartoon were their cool Boba Fett-like masks that they could bring down over their faces with just a wave of their hands. In the 80s, we loved characters with masks and helmets more than we loved oxygen and candy. Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, Ninjas, Snake Eyes, Cobra Commander. Heck, Kenner made an entire toy line devoted to masks and helmets. Sadly, the Silver Hawks figures were denied the masks and we were left with their goofy faces peeking out. Worse, the faces were painted onto the vac metal, so when you chipped their face, it turned silver underneath. The figures would have been much cooler with their masks on. I admit, limited posability and fragile design are not a winning combination for an action figure, making nice examples very hard to find on the secondhand market. But if you're a collector looking for silver hawks, put out the effort. It's worth it. They're some of the most beautiful figures ever designed. They're the most beautiful figures of the 1980s, and they look great in a display case. But let's be honest, they only do one thing. And the novelty of that wears off very quickly. 
They don't even have a neck joint to allow them to look in the direction they're flying, which is a big oversight. Being shiny and static and having feathers, they look more like pet toys than kids' toys, or skeet shooting targets.